Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to look at what it means to buy the dip. Now, whenever the market's going down and we have a down day in the market, a red day, one of your red crayon candle days, it's always promoted to buy the dip. But personally, I don't buy the dip. I don't buy every single dip because there is no strategy to buying a dip. Whenever I hear that, I just think, what is your metric to understand which is a good dip, which is a bad dip? Some of us like guacamole, others like French onion. So which dip do you need to buy? That's what we're going to look at in today's video. So if you like the sound of that, hit the like button down below, bell notification icon, subscribe to the channel. Let's dive in. Now, just before I dive into the video, I've got a huge announcement. We are about to launch TIA Lite, the Investor Accelerator Lite. Now, this is all included for the Investor Accelerator members already. But this is a little stepping stone for guys who want to understand the markets a little more, learn about trading and investing, and of course, cryptocurrency. We've got weekly videos and weekly updates in report style. So make sure you drop your name and email address down below. The link is down below, jasonpacino.com forward slash TIA dash light. And this is your monthly Patreon, which you guys have been asking for. Huge discounts for the first 500 lifetime discounts. So make sure you go and check that out. So my first chart, I have plotted the times that YouTubers will say buy the dip. And essentially it is every day that has gone down, down from the previous day. So you can essentially say you're buying the dip every single day. And I don't know about you, but I don't have unlimited funds to be buying every single dip, nor do I wanna be buying every single dip on the way down. I have specific dips that I want to buy. And that can go into a lot more detail, which you've heard me talk about on the channel before. But in today's video, I want to come up with something really simple and then build on that. So I want to give you some sort of template to begin working with. And unfortunately, you got to do the work. That's that's the bad side of this. You've got to do some work if you're going to be getting in at good prices and getting out of good prices. But if you want to follow the crowd, be led by your shepherd, then you can just buy every single dip. Personally, that's not my strategy. Now, on top of this, the whole buy the dip scenario, new investors believe this is what a market looks like. Buy the low, sell the top. Buy the next low, sell the top. Buy the next low, sell the next top, and so on. But on the way down, all we hear, and that's all that's out there in the mainstream YouTube media, is to buy every single dip. So no way is it going to work out that you're buying this exact low and selling this exact top. So personally, I don't think it's any reason why we should actually be selling the exact top as well. And no one really has a saying of sell the pumps. It's always buy the dip, but never anything about selling the tops. Now, from my experience, what an investment actually looks like is something more around buying areas like this, potentially buying here as well, maybe getting suckered in and buying this level, thinking that the market might rise and then finding out that it falls. Maybe I'll buy here again. Maybe I'll buy here because I was too scared to buy here. I didn't have a plan. And then I'll also be buying on breakouts. And so the market starts to look a little more like this. These are the areas that we're buying. Maybe we're even buying more breakouts here. And this is over a long period of time. This is three years. So it gives me time to accumulate more money, whether it's from a job, whether it's from other investments. And then I can start to plow that into the markets. Now, if I'm doing this full time, then I need to be able to Pull, I need to be able to pull out some of those profits and I need to have ideas of when I'm going to pull those out. Like I've spoken about on the channel, taking profits, I tend to do that when the market is at its, its most extreme. Plus, I use Wyckoff and GAN rules to be getting out of a market. And that came in at these times here in April. This area kept me safe because I wasn't buying into the hype. This was alt season. This was Bitcoin going to $80,000. This is Bitcoin going to $70,000, 100000 100, This was all the talk at this time. Those times got me scared. So I'm not buying there, but I am selling at these points or at least rotating into other major positions. This is more what a trade would look like. This is like the anatomy of a trade, which Wyckoff talks about. And so we might not even be selling the tops on these runs up. We might get a few because we just see that the market goes crazy. We see that a lot of people are in the market. It shoots up and it doesn't follow through, which just means the energy is lost. The momentum's lost. And so I might start to sell on the way down as well. We've got these big levels of support which have broken down. So I might start to sell here as well. So this, even though we haven't sold the top, we've seen a top come in and we can still sell out. The beauty with cryptocurrency, which new investors do not understand, is that crypto tends to fall very hard. It can go down 60, 70, 90, 95%. 
that is often seen as a really bad thing. But I find that way more comforting because I know that I can get back in at a lower price. And if I miss it, if I happen to be selling at these levels, then it's possible. There's more possibility that this market is going to come back to this level at some point in the future because this looks like a reasonable top on the way up. But remember, we're here to talk about buying the dips. And I just wanted to give an example of what an anatomy of a trade looks like so that we can understand that we don't need to be buying every single time we hear this buy the dip saying. And it's really something that screws with new investors because if you just have sayings and feelings in a market, you will get eaten alive. You need to have something on paper. You need to have some science, some maths to go with the art of feeling a market. So let's dive further into the science and leave the feelings to the side just for the moment. Feelings are also very good in a market provided you have been in a market for many years and you understand the emotion of the market. Coming into a market after a few weeks, a few months, maybe even a couple of years is not enough time to develop the emotional side needed for a market. You really need to be in these long time. And this doesn't come from me. This is Wyckoff doing his thing. This is Gan. This is all the legends that have spent decades in a market, not just some random like myself on YouTube with a Satoshi shirt. Okay. So, I'm looking at the lows here. Let's stick with the lows. Now, these levels with little orange arrows are areas of potential purchase time, or, you know, buying Bitcoin. And this comes from our fear and greed chart. So I've got the max. And this is just a really basic beginning of a plan. This is not complete. There is no sell signals on this. This is just looking at somewhere to begin. And this is what I talk about in the group with the Investor Accelerator guys and our new Patreon as well, which is coming up uh, in a week's time. I've got a link to that in the description. I'll show that in a little further detail in a moment. But essentially, we have these low points of 8 and 15, and these come in in February. So if we look back at our map of February, our chart, then February here, February 1st, February 2nd, we're buying at $9,000. We're also buying it at around six or seven thousand dollars and all these points here are purchasing times these are the better buy the dip opportunities using the beginnings of a plan which we then have to develop and so we, we can then start to add filters into this saying we don't want to be buying anything which is picking something here which is not which is less than 55 percent from an all-time high we only want to be buying stuff that's uh, more than 60% of an all-time high. That's just one example. We could even go down to different swings, different uh, moving averages. These are all the things that need to be tried and tested into a plan so that then you can follow it without getting feelings involved and you actually see some data to be following. Now, what happens if we don't have the data to follow? The feelings will get involved as we see the market break down again. So this can happen. And this could be very similar to what's happening now. We just don't know. If this market is a time that we would be buying, and this is what we've bought already from our fear and greed plan using our spreadsheet here where we've logged all of our data, then at this point, we might be getting a little scared if we see the market fall from this point into some other support levels and then base out again. And that might stop us from buying this level as well and uh, prevent us from getting a much better average price for our portfolio. So we want to be buying here, we want to be buying here, and then on the way up, we need to have some sell targets, some sell uh, rules on when to get out of the market. Now, one such rule, or in this case, filters, that I've just thought about, and uh, we want to test it to apply it, because that's the way we do it with plants, is only sell at greater than 92 on the fear and greed index after an all-time high. The reason I put that in is that we saw some fear and greed above the 90s in June. So that was June 2019. But what happened in June 2019? We were still be uh, below the old all-time high. We would have exited at a profit. We were buying at six, seven, nine thousand. We're also buying at three, four, five thousand dollar Bitcoin. And we would be exiting at a profit at around the 12, 11, 13 thousand dollars. But we wouldn't have held in for these long runs. And so that's a filter. That's the example of a filter that we can use. Now it has to be tested across the market and if you're not prepared to test then you know you're better off just going through and buying every single dip and then not selling because you just need to hodl. So buy the dip and hodl is really really just basic noob type of rhetoric that is 
about it online when there is no plan involved. So if there's no plan, it's easy just to say a couple of things, go with your feeling, you'll survive. Now back to the rule of exiting or selling some of the position, not all of it, selling some greater than 92, we could use something like we did here. We have $1,000 purchases, we could sell just $1,000 of Bitcoin at these levels just to cover our initial capital. And I know a lot of people saying, no, I don't want to hold it. It's going to 100,000, it's going to 200,000. You know, you could be the Dogecoin guy that rides his portfolio up to $3 million and then crashes back down to 900,000. I suspect it's going to go a lot lower. But if we're just taking some profits, covering our initial capital at these highs, having a little bit more in the bank, go spend it on something nice, and then also having a little more to reinvest at the lows, you'll feel so confident at these low levels. And you won't even care that the market goes down 60, 70, 80% against you because you've covered your initial capital and you're building a position. So you're getting more Bitcoin for your money. That's what this game is about. It's not about being a moron and buying every single dip. Just buy the dip. Buy the dip. Don't worry. HODL, market will go up. Buy the dip. It's nonsense. So now that we have an idea of buying the dip, which dips are created better and which aren't, you know, we, I don't believe all dips are created equal, which you probably heard me say before. We've got better opportunities for purchasing and we have some idea of when to sell some of the Bitcoin. I'm not saying sell all of it. And uh, that's sort of where people get a little bit caught up thinking that it's just like, no, it's you've said sell, it means everything's gone. That takes patience and it takes building a portfolio in that manner. It's another thing to get past just going all in at one time. It's just patience and just looking for those opportunities and then taking them when they come. And so this is what I'm looking at in terms of a plan. It looks far more messy than just basically what I expect new people think of is pretty much just buying right here, buying at the low and then selling the exact top. Like you just, you never know when that's coming. And so that's why it does look a little bit messier or a lot messier because you're basically buying across all of this area. You're basically taking a chunk out of the middle that's what your that's your profit there because your average price is somewhere through here and now your average sell price is you know somewhere through there and so your profit is like that and this is a disgustingly messy chart but i guess you're getting the idea of where the profits are coming from and how it works long term speaking of working long term the analysis that we use is from gan and i found a little article online i remember reading this years ago when i first started this was written by Richard D. Wyckoff, the Wyckoff that you've probably heard about many times before online. Wyckoff followed W.D. Gann around back in 1909 to track his trades. And you can find this online just up here, talking about all of his trades and seeing how Gann traded. And so Wyckoff is the hero at the moment in cryptocurrency, but Wyckoff followed Gann around. They're both fantastic. One's not better than the other, have both different styles of trading, uh, but very similar at the same time. So I, I suggest go have a look at this article and uh, it, just enjoy what these traders had done over 100 years ago. Now, if you're wanting to learn more about trading and investing, we, of course, use GAN and Wyckoff's analysis in the Investor Accelerator. We've just launched TIA Lite. So the Investor Accelerator Lite. This is for people who are maybe are just looking for the first step into the markets, into learning and educating themselves about being a better investor and a better trader in all financial markets. So if you're interested in that, we have a special for the first 500 guys. Drop your name, email address. The link is down below in the description. First 500 are getting a very big discount, lifetime discount on the membership for as long as they stay uh, members of TIA Lite. Now, if you are a TIA member already, you're at the, the top category, you're going to get all of this for free as well, plus the courses, plus the Facebook group. And so I'm just saying, if you want to have a little more education on your trading and investing, go and drop your email address down below. It doesn't cost you anything to sign up to be notified when we launch. So check it out. Now it's coming up to Aussie tax time. And if you want to get your superannuation into cryptocurrency, check out New Brighton Capital. Use the link down below to get $3, $300 free credit with New Brighton Capital. And you just need to book in your free 20 minute consultation to understand how to get your super into cryptocurrency using an SMSF, like you see me do on Instagram over here, daily Q and A's. I have my superannuation in cryptocurrency, just writing out these big long waves. And of course, go and follow us on Twitter, daily crypto updates, news, trades, investing, everything over there as well. I can get to you a lot easier 
on Twitter. So thank you once again, guys. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, all the good stuff. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Use the links down below. TIA Lite is coming up. I'm very excited to launch that because that's just another addition to the entire education piece that I've been absolutely enjoying uh, presenting to you guys. So I'll see you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.